to appear for court and two fairs to appear for fingerprinting. By the time they finally arrested me one time and they got me on a recognizance where if I didn't show up for court, this was now D-Day. Like I had to actually start learning what was going on and figuring this out and go to court and fight this stuff where I was looking at two and a half years in jail for nothing. Oh, jeez. So at that point, I figured, okay, I can't just live out of the box anymore. i got to figure out what's going on, and that was about six years ago. And uh, I ended up going through, well, the, the, the court ended up happening late last spring, about a year and a half ago, and I knew enough to go in, and after three, three days in court, um, not really using arguments, but it was actually, it turned out to be the best experience of my life because I got to actually see the operation of the court and what was having an effect and what will, what wasn't. And what was really happening. So it's impossible to really figure things out unless you actually throw yourself right in there and it's a whole trial by fire. But I ended up walking out three days later with, uh, I think they went through three, three, crown, three crown attorneys on me. They had uh, two removed from the case. They wound up with their third one, a senior litigator who actually ended up being respectful to me at least finally. And uh, they, they discharged everything against me after the third day. They convicted me of all the charges, which I thanked them for. I said, thank you. I said, uh, I said uh, they, or whatever, they... Uh, uh, they found me guilty, and I, and I just stood up and I said, well, thank you. I've been trying to plead guilty to the facts for three days now. And they said, well, but we're going we're gonna to discharge everything right away. I said, I don't care. I said, can I go now? Are we done yet? And so these nine charges just kind of went away, and they convicted me, and they discharged everything on the spot, which is, to me, a victory, because they had originally asked for, I think they were, I was looking at two years in prison, and by the end of the third day, I didn't even know what I'd technically done right until a few more experiences with the courts and the police, and we went over everything, and we were able to cross-reference everything that we did to see, well, okay, well, this is why they did this, this is why this happened, figured everything out, and... Uh, when it came to sentencing, the judge looked at the Crown like, okay, well, I've convicted him. What do you, what do you want? And the Crown basically put his palms up in the air and said, I'm, I'm walking away from this. I'm leaving that up to you. I don't want nothing to do with this. So the Crown was trying to walk away from the liability of the, of the claims that they had brought against me because if they had asked for something, I'd have recourse against them. So they put their palms up. They left the judge hanging. He ended up asking, I think, for 50 bucks for in fines for nine criminal charges that were supposed to see me in jail for two years, which I didn't pay anyways because I don't give a shit. And uh, from there, we've built this entire, the whole system you see, the philosophy, the ideas we're working on is all based off my experiences in court. That was only one. I'm up to about seven now, uh, where now I'm initiating the things, and I want to go to court against these people. I love it. I think it's great, and we're having fun with it. But we were able to break down everything that's going on uh, from these experiences, and when I finally abandoned a lot of the stuff that we'd learned previously online, we... You know, oh, we'd watch these videos and these videos and the truth language and UCC and all this stuff. And all this, the only thing that that stuff left me with is confusion. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. You'd have to be a rocket genius just to figure this stuff out. Never mind go into a courtroom and attempt to argue this. If this is common law, this is something the common man cannot understand. So it has to be wrong. Or if it's not, or correction, it's not wrong. But if the common man cannot make these arguments or defend himself using them, then what good are they? So we had to go back and we had to basically just rebuild our entire way of thinking about this. And uh, I think we'd spoke, uh, I, I told you about the experience I had in court that really made it come all together for me last year uh, when we spoke on Thursday or Friday last week? Thursday, I think it was, yeah. Thursday night, yeah, where I'd said that I... I had the opportunity to go to court, and I call them all opportunities now, to defend one of my numbered corporations against uh, bylaw violations for the city of Winnipeg. And that was when I figured it all out, because I had to it's sit a down... It's good story. Yeah, and I had to sit down, I had to think about, how do I defend a corporation in court? Because back then I was still thinking, well, this 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 corporation that I that I went down and registered, it's, it's registered, like it, it has to abide by statutes. Obviously, it's a creation of statutes, right? So, so how on earth am I going to defend against this? And I, I mulled over it for a couple of days, and I got to thinking, well, hang on a second here. Wait, 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 wait. I'm like, okay, this thing is registered, but the government didn't create it. It's not a creation of statutes. My signature created it. And where in my article, articles of incorporation does it say I'm obligated to obey or the, the new entity I created is obligated to obey statutory law? I said, well, it doesn't. I said, and besides that, Who's authorizing statutes to be to be uh, to be enforced against my my corporation? I said, well, nobody. I said, I'm the only one that can authorize anything to be anything to be uh, uh, brought against my corporation, uh, or to be legislated, or be to be administrated against my corporation because I'm the administration. And 
the thoughts started coming together, and all the pe- and all of a sudden, just all this learning over the last ten years. I remember there's one morning I woke up and just it was like a bang. And I was like, "Holy shit, that's what's going on." So I had an idea of what was going on, even though I hadn't fully explored all the, all the possibilities of this yet. And I get, okay, I'm going to go into court this morning. I know exactly what I'm going to say to this prosecutor. So I walked in, and there's a lineup of people uh, waiting to speak to this city prosecutor. And he's yelling and screaming at people, and he probably knows who he is if he's ever ever gets the occasion to listen to this. And I remember as soon as I heard him yelling at people and everything, you're all, you know, the, 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 the charter says this, and you're obligated to do this, and yada, yada, yada. And I gave my car keys to my buddy. I said, here, take these. I said, I'm going to be in jail after I talk to this guy. And uh, he kind of laughed, and he was like, oh, this is going to be good. So I got up there, and I was wearing my leather jacket, uh, you know, a nice knee-length one, and my, my, my business pants. And I was looking a little businessy, and I walked up there, and he looks at me, and he goes, uh, he goes kind of like, uh, what, like, what do you want? Like, what are you here for? And I said, well, I'm here regarding the matter for, you know, blah, 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 Manitoba Limited. He goes, all right, what's your name? <clears throat> and so if people have watched the videos, they'll understand now the difference between the importance in your name and your roles. So this is the first time instead of saying, well, I'm Dean Clifford, when he said, what's your name? I said, my name is President and Chief Executive Officer of that corporation. That's who I am. And I got about eight inches away from his nose when I said that. And I had to lean down a little bit because I, I might look short in the videos, but I think I'm just over 5'11". I'm about 190 pounds. I'm not a small guy, and he was. And I just got right up to him, put my nose about eight inches from his face, and I said, I'm the president and CEO of that corporation. That's who I am. And he just stood back, took a couple steps back, and went, oh, oh, um, uh, oh, all right, um, and boy, you've never seen an attitude adjustment on an individual like this in your life. And so that took, and uh, so that, yeah. that's, that's what made me realize, okay, you know what? It doesn't matter what my name is. What role am I here in? What capacity am I? And that's when, as soon as I got back home, and I sent a letter off to him clarifying everything, and he stayed proceedings and wouldn't touch me with a ten foot pole after that. I, I broke everything down from that point and reversed everything and went all the way back to, okay, where is the beginning of this so we can rebuild the whole model that I work with now and I broke it all the way down to man I said okay we all know we're a man so where does everything else come from and then we built backwards from there and figured out okay this is where the name comes from the legal person so what's our role in that name we figured out what the, the fact that you know uh, a legal person isn't that's not you obviously it's something you created how was it created well uh, uh, it was created by an agreement between you and government, so obviously that's a two-party contract now, and what are the roles of this person and trust law, and it all just blossomed from there, and you know it's right when it's so simple that you everyone can understand it, because that's exactly what it is, and I started going out and ta- uh, teaching this to some of the people that we had already involved in groups with here in Winnipeg, and as soon as I started talking about this, they all just went, holy shit. And everything clicked for them. They started understanding it, and since then, people have been contacting me and saying, "Yeah, as soon as we understood a little bit of what was going on, this we 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 brought up these two points in court, and and no one wants to speak to us anymore." Yeah, well, see, that's the thing, and that's the thing for everybody that I've seen that's listened to your stuff, um, or watched your videos. They're sitting back and going, "Why hasn't somebody explained it this way before?" This is this this we understand. This we can work with. There's no riddles. There's no hoops to jump through. We get this. And why, why isn't it being shared? Now that we've got that why part over, we have you sharing and we're grateful and we thank you. Now we can be a little bit more independent in doing it ourselves. Unfortunately, it takes for that one person sometimes to get the information out there in a way that is, you know, um, communicable. That, is that right? Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but if if you do it in a way that you can relay the message to the masses, which is something that hasn't been done yet from what I've seen, because I have not seen the um, response like I've seen to your videos. Yep. Well, and now, this, is the other, this is the other part too. Is everybody's always everybody used to contact me uh, like like um, or and I know a lot of the other people too that uh, that are teaching certain concepts. And I'm not going to say whether or not certain concepts are valid or not valid. But everybody always wants to know. Well, well, where where did you get that information from? You know, who wrote the book on that? Or can you prove anything you're saying? And and I always like to tell people, it's like, well, the first 
concept you have to understand is that there is no definitive authority on your rights other than God. Like, you're the sovereign. You're the one that dictates your rights. You dictate how your life is going to go. Like, everyone wants this book somewhere that's got a signature on it by somebody that said, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, he's right. And that doesn't exist. That The whole point of being a sovereign is the fact that, you know, aside from being subject to the laws of God, you're subject to no man. Yeah. I have a suggestion from one of the listeners. I don't know if you've ever seen the RSA videos where it's a hand drawing as someone's talking. They've suggested that you do like a cartoon type way of explaining that. So if, <laughs> if there's anybody out there that's listening to this and has any knowledge in this kind of thing and would like to help Dean out, get a hold of me and I'll send you to him. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, send me a graphic or, artist yeah. because I got uh, or, I got yeah. more than enough on my table than to start learning how to how to make cartoons to post online. So well, and these things have funny ways of working themselves out. So if you put it out there, I'm sure by the end of the week you will have somebody saying, "Hey, I can do that for you." And that's how this stuff all snowballs, you know. And I'm not. Uh, I mean, uh, the other problem is too is a lot of this stuff when you go to seminars and you're paying for all this information from people, it's concepts that people have come up with that they kind of try to hold close to themselves as their intellectual property and they want to profit from it in the whole nine yards and my theory on this this is and we had to talk about this about where uh, about the about the the incident the two incidents in my life that led me to on the path that I'm on right now uh, and, and the only conclusion I can draw from everything is this is not my information it's not my uh, my intellectual property because this 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 information is coming to me from somewhere else and it's yeah. not mine to keep. It's I'm supposed to share this with people. You, everyone yeah, well, should know see, their rights. More people need to understand that they're not supposed to gain from the help. I mean, it's it, it, what and, and what ends up happening is gifting happens or bartering happens in some way, shape, or form. If you're giving, you're going to get back. But well, people are really, really consumed with the idea of instant gratification. So that makes it a little more difficult, which is why I admire you so much, because you're not into that instant gratification. Obviously, if you've been fighting for as long as you are, there's it's not about the instant gratification of it. No, quite the opposite, actually. I mean, no matter what people believe, um, on some level, you're, you're, you're judged by the universe, by God, whatever you want to call it, uh, by something greater than yourself. You're being judged by your actions. So yeah. if you're not out there doing doing good, what you consider to be good, and you you want, uh, uh, I'm not even sure if I'm phrasing that properly, but I even I think I'm with the best of intentions, though. Th there you go. It's all it's it's your intentions. Do you want do you want better things for mankind, or do you want worse things for mankind, kind of thing? And I've spent time in jail now with people that obviously should not be there. Ninety percent of the people that are in our prisons should not be there. Um, they you know it's their third open liquor charge on a reserve for just walking down a gravel road drinking a beer they've never harmed anybody and they've been in there for 16 months waiting for their first hearing like this stuff yeah. is wrong this stuff has to end and we're not holding government accountable nobody is and we're the no, only no. ones who can hold government accountable if everybody thinks that it's up to the police to and and, uh, and attorneys to to sue government to hold them accountable i mean uh, wake up okay now here's that let you're fantastic i your interviews with you are just they Wonderful. My talk on Thursday with Dean was fantastic. It, everything led into the next question kind of type thing, much like it is now. So he's talking about government accountability. I would like you to explain how you've been able to make the government accountable and how far you've come in that. Yeah, we're still meeting, obviously, a lot of resistance because uh, you got to remember, once the gig is up, the gig is up. So these people do anything and everything they can to, to cover up their crimes, when you bust them on a lie, they make a bigger lie to cover up the first lie. That's just the way government works. That's all they do is they lie. Um, they, I mean, the whole point of government in the first place was uh, to create a, a civilized organization uh, to protect your birthright, which is your share of the commonwealth. So if somebody had a claim against your 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 claim your share of the commonwealth, they could bring it to court uh, if you damage them, and they could collect on it or whatever, and everything's. Everything was handled in a civilized manner, and you know, six men with guns couldn't just show up at your house and take it from you, right? It, it all had to be done uh, legitimately through the courts. Uh, the queen ultimately was the protector of the common law, the defender of the, the, the common law and the faith, the whole nine yards. But what government has done is they've found a way to actually be the ones to, to meddle in your trust, in your estate, and steal from it, which is what they're doing. Um, and the way to hold them accountable is to, to take them to court. 
in a civilized manner. Protesting is not the way to go and to hold government accountable. Um, they want you to do that because that's where they just label y'all as a bunch of, uh, what's the proper word?